Hi folks, my name is Sam from Help for Home DIY and today I'm going to show you how to paint the finishing coats on a room, mainly using one of these. So at this stage you've got the mist coat on and it's probably a little bit patchy. The mist coat isn't designed to give a consistent colour. Um, it's designed to provide a good foundation for the rest of the finishing coat. So that's why if it's a little bit patchy, that's fine. It doesn't matter. In fact, that shows that if anything, it's seeped into the wall uh, really well, which is what you want it to do. So you want to put a nice consistent base coat on before you put the finishing colors on. Now the finishing colors tend to be a bit more expensive than the other paint. Take for example, the mist coat that used very basic bog standard uh, matte emulsion which is six or seven pounds for 10 litres, ridiculously cheap, but that's what the professionals, decorators recommend. Uh, from doing my research online, that's what they recommend, that's all you need, which is fine. Now what I do at that point is, after the mist coat's done, you want to put a nice consistent coat of the same emulsion on, but just don't water it down. What that does is it provides a nice consistent finish so that you're good for the coloured coats which is great because that means you need less of the coloured paint to get a nice consistent finish. Bear in mind the coloured paint tends to be a bit more expensive. Uh, I've heard of some mates, I won't name them, charging £70 for 10 litres. Ridiculous. But anyway, so I had some of this kicking around. Uh, it does its job, to be honest. I can imagine some professional decorators rolling their eyes at that. To be honest, I just had it kicking about. So, and when we got it, it was on a ridiculously good offer. As it claims, it it, it doesn't get rid <laughs> of coloured paint or whatever like it does. That's absolutely load of rubbish, to be honest. But it is a good base coat. And uh, if you put something like that on, if you've got it knocking around, or even just an unwatered mix of the emulsion, that, that'd be fine. You could also get a cheap version of emulsion uh, that's a similar colour to your final coats as well. It doesn't have to be white. And that would also provide a good backing coat as well. So put that on first. Okay, so the tools you need to do this are uh, pretty simple and I think you probably already know them, but I'm gonna very quickly cover them. Ah, a roller and the handle uh, for it. Um, for this, I've used a short pile uh, roller, seem to be give pretty good effects, um, and uh, well, a handle. Now, obviously, what else you'll need to get the uh, corners and, uh, and around certain fixtures and fittings and architrave and skirting and all that lot is a brush. Um, you'll need a roller tray, just make sure that it's big enough for the roller. And the paint. Um, obviously, the room's already painted now, um, so I'm just going to backtrack to the videos that I took while I painted the room. At this stage, you'll still have the sheets on the floor, um, you'll still have the masking tape around things that you don't want paint on, and obviously, you should have left that on um, after finishing the mist coat. So, I won't cover that in this video. So, the first thing we want to do with that base coat or whatever it is you're using uh, below the coloured coats is do the corners and around fixtures and fittings, like light switches. Um, obviously your light switches are gonna be dangling out, um, but basically you get in the places where the roller can't reach. Now, the roller probably could get into the corner, but I've always found that the edge of it ends up stuffing the wall as well. And in places like this, you know, you could probably go like that, but you can't get right up there. So that's why we use a brush first. When you do come to use the roller, um, you get as close to the corner as possible. Now the reason for that is because it's the roller that gives the texture of the wall you want. So it ends up being slightly stippled. If you look on my blog post, I've got a pretty good high resolution picture that shows that stipple finish that I've got on this wall. Really good. So, like I said, paintbrush first around fixtures and fittings and in corners, and windowsill, skirting, architrave, coving, whatever else you've got and then go over it with the roller. So we just switched to the time lapse of me showing that and a bit later on in this video, I'll show you some techniques. So 
So that's the two mist coats on and the base coat and it's looking good enough to put the colours on now. So the colours we're going to use are two colours. This is going to be the feature wall along here uh, where I'm going to put some shelves up which is going to be a dark grey colour, natural slate. The other three walls are going to be a lighter grey colour, polished pebble. We'll apply these uh, exactly the same as uh, the base coat. So in the corners, uh, around the plug sockets, I'll uh, give it a nice thin coat with the brush. Um, the reason being is, now that I've put the base coat on with the roller, I've got that texture on the walls now, which is slightly dimpled. Um, so using a thin coat with the brush will maintain that texture, and I don't want to see any brush strokes through that. And after I've put the brush strokes on, I'm gonna use the roller for the rest of the wall, and it's just a very simple, what's called, an, I think, a smooth surface <coughs> roller uh, with quite a short pile. Um, and then I will leave it a few hours and do the final coat later on to get cracking. Right, so to paint it in the corners nice and neat, um, you just put a little bit on the brush. Not much. And just brush it in like that. Don't worry about the streaks at the moment. Well, you don't want it too thick. But you end up going up here with the roller, and up there with the roller fairly close to the corner. So that texture that the roller creates will will be quite close to the corner. In addition to, to using a paintbrush in the corner, you also want to get in the bits where a roller might struggle, say around light switches or um, along door frames there, just to make sure that the paint's covered right up to the door frame, frame which, which a roller might struggle to do, and also around sockets. Through the corners of the windows, you really want to go over it with a brush first um, and then go over it with a roller. The reason being, by the time you come back to going over it with the roller, the uh, paint that you applied with the brush has had a chance to dry a little bit. So the corners with the colour coating um, tend to, well they need a few more coats and, um, and just doing the brush first helps with that. Like I was saying, you want to put a very light coating on with the brush first. We don't want any streaky marks. Just really, like I've done there, just really get rid of the thick bits. Just fan it out. Um, so that you, you maintain that texture that the roller gave uh, with the base coat. And just really spread it out. Regarding the techniques of rolling uh, paint on, uh, just, it's quite simple really, just don't rush is the main message. Um, but what to do, is once you get some good bit of paint on your roller, just like that, so it's nice and even all the way around, no patches. Um, start very lightly, don't squish it in, just spreading that paint on the wall. And then you can apply a little bit more pressure, but really not much. Um, just keep going up and down nice and straight. If you go too quick, then it'll splatter everywhere and make a mess. And the, um, the ripples that it leaves, the, the texture that it leaves on the, on the wall won't be very good. Um, so the trick is really just to keep it nice and straight. not too much pressure. If you put too much pressure on, what you'll get is paint builds up on the edges. If you put too much pressure on, then you'll end up with two tracks of paint either side. So just keep going until it looks like an even coat. Bit of a fiddly bit down there. And you also notice that the last roll of paint came up to there. I'm putting a new bit here. So there's that bridge between the two um, coats. So that was the first one and that was the second one. Just make sure you go over that bridge. Just to blend between the two. So 
to make sure that, that just helps to make sure that there's not sort of any out protruding bits of paint. The other thing to be wary of is if you're doing one part of the wall and you're going to go away to have dinner or whatever, so it dries really quick. Give it 10 minutes or so and it's pretty dry. Um, I think I've got paint on my nose. Anyway, if you're doing that, don't just leave it like this because you want it to blend with the next, you know, when you come back and, and carry on with the wall. Try to just really fade it out. I've got some blobs on that. Anyway, um, try to really fade it out to nothing. Like that. So it's getting nice and thin here. We don't want any straight lines really, not thick straight lines anyway. There, that's, that's a bit better. Um, but it just means it will blend with the, the next coat when I come back to this later. Um, and you shouldn't have any problems. In terms of uh, rolling up to a corner, obviously the roller can't go right up to the corner because the round bit on the end there will scrape that edge. So, as I mentioned before, you brush the corners like I've done here um, to get that and, and brush it nice and thin with a few coats so you don't leave the brush marks. But with the roller, you only go so far. Um, I probably I tend to leave it about half an inch away from the corner just to avoid the risk of scuffing that perpendicular edge with the end of the roller. Um, so what I've done here is I've not, this is a light kind of dark colour um, obviously between these two walls. Um, and what I've done is I, I would usually brush the dark colour down here um, but to make it clear for you I've left it and I'll just show you how close I get up to the corner with the roller there. Um, I've just switched to the GoPro. So with this, we angle that down there to get squeeze out any paint from that left hand edge. The reason being is we don't want any blobs of paint along the corner. They'll be hard to get rid of. Okay. So very light pressure to begin with. You can see how I'm leaving that gap. Still very light pressure. Get past that cable, it's a bit awkward. Oh, yeah. back to here to blend those two uh, you know previously painted line and the new line get that little bit in there and although it looks bad at the moment because you've got a light colour dark colour that's a very neat finish in a way because there's nothing there's no blobs that are poking out so that's worked out quite well Now it's time to paint the corners. Um, so we've got a dark colour here and a light colour here. And I'm trying to tidy up this corner here. Um, now there are sponges and various tools out there to do it. I've seen people do it with masking tape along the light wall, uh, right up to the corner. Um, but to be honest, all it needs is a brush uh, and a bit of practice and a good technique. So what we want to do first is get the right amount of paint on the brush. Um, and we just saturate the brush there and just sort of dab off the end of it. And we'll get the other side as well. Not too much on the brush. Then we just bring the brush up to the wall. I find it easier to go down the way. And we do a few passes so it doesn't need to be perfect first time. Just take your time on this. No, 
kind of bits of feather off the edge so that you don't get any lumps of paint. And it's as simple as that. Just need a bit of technique, a bit of practice and you'll get the hang of it. Bear in mind that whenever you're trying to create a neat corner like I've just shown you, it's usually because there's a transition between a light colour and a dark colour on two different walls. Now in all cases you want to do the light colour first in the corner. The reason being is because you can use the light colour and just get it in the corner and it doesn't matter if it goes on both walls. Once the light colour is dried you can then use a dark colour and fine tune it just like I've showed you and it should in most cases take one, possibly two coats of the dark colour to overlap or to mask that light colour underneath sufficiently so that you can't see that there was a light colour there in the first place. So do the light colour first and then get in there with the dark colour, fine tuning it. With regards to the technique, say this is the corner, and this is a wall here. If you're going up, hold it at that diagonal. If you're coming down, hold it at that diagonal. The reason being is if you hold it at that diagonal when you go up, then the paint at this side of the brush will gradually work its way down to there. Therefore, the brush will last longer. The paint will spread evenly into that corner. Similarly, if you're coming down, hold the brush at that diagonal coming down, and the paint on this side of the brush will work its way slowly to that side of the brush as you're coming down. And then once that paint's dried, if you're not completely happy, if you've lost a bit of the texture that the roller had on the rest of the wall, you can get in there with a the roller and you can get as close as sort of quarter of an inch if you're careful. And of course the same applies when you're going around the sills, uh, going along the top as well, and if you're going along the skirting. In this case, I've left the skirting out for now, because obviously I'm completely redoing this room if you're following me, then you know what's going on. Um, so I'm just painting all the first, then I'm going to put the skirting on later. Makes sense. Um, I'm also going to completely strip the paint off these, which I'll cover in another um, YouTube video. So subscribe just to make sure that you keep on track um, with the videos I'm posting out. Um, so it doesn't really matter too much here. I'm, go I'm going to paint these, but I'm just going to overlap the sill because the paint's coming off the sill anyway. What I'll do is I'll run, once the paint's dry, a standing knife along that edge, and I'll use a heat gun to take that paint off. And it'll come off separately to the paint on the wall because I've cut it with a standing knife. Um, for the uh, coving, it doesn't really matter too much. I've only gone so far up with the paint. I'll try and show you. There. The reason being is I'm putting coving on. So I can just leave it messy up there as long as it goes past where the coving is going to go. Again, if it makes sense to leave the coving off until you paint it as well. Also, um, even with this colour being so dark, it will still need another coat on the corners, but I won't cover that in the video. Uh, I think you get the point. So just one final thing, for, like, for me that's all the painting done. If you're in a similar situation where you think, great, that's it, I can go and wash my brushes and my rollers. Just one thing to bear in mind is yes, wash the trays and the brushes, they don't take long to wash, but everyone knows if you're gonna keep a roller, um, then you've obviously got to wash it, but everyone knows that it's gonna take ages to wash, it's an absolute pain. So one thing I would say is put that roller in a bag, tape up the bag so it's airtight, um, it doesn't have to be completely airtight. Then just wait a couple of days. The reason being is once all the paint's dry, you start using the room a bit more, you might find the odd little bump here and there or a bit of paint that needs sorting out. And at least then you've got a roller on a hand that can just whip out the bag. It's already got wet paint on it and you can just quickly go over it if it's just one little bit. Much easier <coughs> than getting the roller out from say the garage again, getting the paint out, stirring the paint, blah, 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 we get the picture. So just keep it in the back for a couple of days. It won't dry. As long as you just tape it up around the handle, it'll be fine. I've not missed anything out in this video. That's the beauty with time lapses. Everything you've seen is what I've done. I know it works. Therefore, if you follow these steps, uh, including maybe referring back to my plastering, if you have to plaster my plastering videos, then you'll know that you'll get a, a brilliant finish. And I'd just like to finish up on this high res photo so you can see the quality of the finish for yourself. Okay, so that concludes how to paint onto fresh plaster. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, as always, I put more on my blog post on my website about this. 
um, helpforhomediy.co.uk. There's a few extra tips or tricks that I always like to put on my website. And if you like this video, please subscribe and press that bell icon down below so you get notified of any more videos that come out. As always, it'll be one video every Saturday, sometimes morning, sometimes lunchtime, depending on how much editing I've got to do. My name's Sam, I'm from helpforhomediy.co.uk. Thank you for watching. So after taking all the precautions with making sure that the spray paint doesn't get on any of the doors. Obviously some spray paint got through. Maybe I should do a how to on removing paint from my